answer. Cry and prepare ye the way of the Lord. we go into the word of God this morning I take my text from Exodus chapter 3 Exodus 3 verses 19 to 21 I'm going to ask you to read alongside with me Exodus 3 19 to 21 and here begins the reading of God's word this morning but I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go no not even by a mighty hand so i will stretch out my hand and strike egypt with all my wonders which i will do in its midst and after that he will let you go and i will give this people favor in the sight of the egyptians and shall be when you go that you shall not go empty-handed Somebody say amen. amen. I'm going to read to your hearing the same scripture from the Message Bible. Listen. God is saying, I know that the king of Egypt won't let you go unless forced to. Child of God, what you're dealing with, what is hindering, the manifestation of your prayers is so strong. God saying, I know that that king, that principality will not let you go unless forced to. Verse 20 says, so I will intervene because of how tough the battle is, because of how resolute that enemy is, I will intervene and hit Egypt where it hurts. He says, oh, my miracles will send them reeling. After which, they will be glad to send you off. And I will see to it that these people get a hearty send off by the Egyptians. When you leave, you won't leave empty handed. Obviously, God is talking about the deliverance and compensation joined together. And this will happen through a divine intervention. God says, I'm going to step into the battle on your behalf. This morning, I want you to keep your mind on the word intervention. It says, so I will intervene and hit Egypt. I will deliver you and compensate you by a divine intervention this morning i bring you the word of god i entitled when god intervenes i didn't say if god intervenes when god intervenes you will see the dot 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 meaning something beautiful something unbelievable something incredible will take place when god intervenes up on the screen you will see a scripture Deuteronomy 6 21 that talks about how it's gonna happen that talks about your testimony to your children that is about to manifest it says tell your child we were slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt and God powerfully intervened and got us out of that country this morning a lot of people are in nigeria yet you are in another country of oppression a country of need a country of shame the scripture says you will tell your children it used to be like that until god powerfully intervened and got us out of the country you shouldn't be in and into the city of your dreams 
so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. What will we do if you don't speak into our situation? When we know that God, when he wants to move, he first speaks. And action follows it. That which you say concerning divine intervention, let action commence this morning in the name of Jesus. For those of us that hear, may we receive the word of God and may it become so real to us, we expect nothing less to happen in our lives. Let our hearts be so filled with what God said that our mouth will only say what is in our heart. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. This month, we will not speak defeat. We will not speak suffering. We will speak divine intervention. We will speak angelic assistance. And it shall come to pass in Jesus' name. In all of this, set our hearts on fire to the helper of our soul. He's called Jesus. Let him be exalted amongst us. Cause us to now love him more for the great deliverance and compensation that is predestined to happen for us. This morning, I bring you the word of the Lord entitled, When God Intervenes. Can I tell you how this happens? I like you, Bible says, when you come into the house of the Lord, draw near to hear. Don't look around. When God intervenes, there is a setting before this kind of scripture. The setting is people are in a place for a long time that they don't want to be. People are dealing with principalities and powers that have held them captive for a long time. People are managing the situation and they're trying to adjust to their reality. And God's been watching for a long time and just wants to know that all that remains until God intervenes. 400 years, the situation had been the same until God intervened. I bring you the word of the Lord as the Lord leads before whom no king can stand. That whatever has been going on, may the Lord, when the Lord intervenes, it's going to be history in the name of Jesus. The scripture says, I know, said the Lord. I fear it when God says, I know. It means that it is true, it is real. I know that the king of Egypt that you are dealing with won't let you go unless forced to. Exodus 3 19 the message Bible I know you better listen to me if you are in doubt before God is saying don't even doubt he that sees all things he knows that what you are dealing with is strong what you're dealing with is resolute I know that the king of Egypt won't let you go Go from what you don't like and go into what you want. I won't let you go unless force. Somebody help me say force. You're not serious this morning. I say say force. You don't know, you know the kingdom of God suffered violence. Listen, listen. If you are going to get into your promise, there has to be some battle. If you think you're going to negotiate yourself to a happy marriage, it's not going to happen like that. Are you there? Are you there? Listen, how many people are here? You know you're gifted. You know that you work hard. Somehow, it's not coming together. The king of Egypt will not let it come together. God says, unless I force him. How many of us want God to divinely intervene powerfully? So you better listen. So when God said that in verse 19, in verse 20, he said, because of that, so I intervened. I looked at your situation and I knew if I left you, just praying in tongues, this matter is serious, why is that? So I intervened. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, please intervene. 
Are there people here you have fasted and you have prayed? Come on, can I see your hand? Are there people here you have sat many exams, you have many certifications and yet? Are there ladies here you are fine, you have changed your ways and yet you are still waiting? May the Lord intervene on everyone's behalf in the name of Jesus. So I will intervene and hit Egypt where it hurts. Oh, my miracles will send them reeling. After which they'll be glad. God will so deal with the forces you're dealing with that they will happily send you off. Because it will be easier for them to let you go. They will realize that this one is touch not. Who am I prophesying to here? It says, God says, I will see to it that these people, his people, those that follow after him, those that serve him, those that honor him, it is a class of people. It didn't say everybody. It said, these people get a hearty send off by the Egyptians, and when these people leave, they won't leave empty handed. It is one thing for God to deliver you. Black and blue, bruised and, and, le and broken legs, broken arms, broke, busted and disgusted. And you just manage to get out of what has held you, but everything else is broken. He says, no, it's not going to be like that. So when you leave, you will not leave empty handed. May the Lord grant deliverance and compensation together through a divine intervention in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My slide puts up a scripture that says, you will tell your children, we were. The word were is in the past. We were broke. We were single and dejected. We were strugglers and so We were whatever it was until God powerfully intervened. Let me ask you a question. Is it the same for someone to intervene? And when somebody intervenes powerfully, is it the same? When God says, I try to intervene, they didn't answer. They say, I'm going to intervene powerfully. You know, by the time I grab this guy, bam! Where he put you, I put him there. Then I lift you up and I make him apologize. I make him pay. For his sins that is to intervene powerfully oh somebody under the sound of my voice you're not coming out of that trouble empty-handed may the lord powerfully intervene in our situation now who needs that prayer jump on your feet and say amen look at how long you have suffered look at how long you have cried say amen powerfully intervene oh sit down i see god and got us out of that country you may be living in the country of pain the country of shame can i tell you the truth is that whatever you go through long enough begins to actually define you that's who you are that's where you live it says, and got us out of that country. I don't know which country it is you're dealing with, but God's going to get you out in Jesus' name. By a powerful intervention. I liked it when I saw this translation. The Lord, that's what we need. I'm talking about stubborn problems. Hello, somebody. Is a problem the same as a stubborn problem? What is a stubborn problem? The one that defies every solution. The one that every prayer, you have been to every mountain, is saying, you are going to mountain, you, when you come back, you meet me here. Gidiba, just wait. Stubborn problems. Stubborn needs that you try to solve. Stubborn situations. Stubborn experiences. Some people, when you sleep, every time you are going to bed, you are wondering, hey, Will this thing show up again? You take Valium so that maybe you sleep so deep you won't see that thing. It inside your Valium it will come. You sleep with the lights on. Maybe the lights will, it will come. You open the windows. It comes through the windows. 
You put your children around you. It just steps over your children and presses you. And nobody else on the bed ever feels anything. Everybody is sleeping soundly. I'm talking about stubborn experiences. The Lord, by a strong hand, will deliver that person in the name of the Lord Jesus. I did a little study about stubborn stains. And even the manufacturers of detergent, they have to look for special products for some stains, like coffee. You pour coffee on your white shirt, wagba. Engine oil, oh, it's nasty. It gets on your clothes. Even the manufacturers said, you have to use like three products. And you have to use them in certain sequence for a certain amount of time if you have any hope of getting it out. Someone say stubborn. It is to interfere with the natural course of events, which means the way it is going, the way it has been. Listen, a lot of people have written you off. They've, they've seen it happen time and time again. Listen, by the natural speed, the natural consequence, you should be signing off. So to intervene is to get involved in the natural course of events and to rearrange it to predetermine the final outcome not the way it should be now it will happen in favor of a person or a group is that person here today it is to become personally involved god says i will he didn't say i will send an angel to be personally involved in a difficult situation somebody say difficult situation a difficult situation in order to benefit someone or a cause. <sighs> the end doesn't have to be the way it looks now. May the Lord powerfully intervene in our families in the name of Jesus. Deuteronomy 6, 21 to 23. I read from the Message Bible. I'm going to read past 21. I'm going to stop at 23. It says, the message Bible please, it says, tell your child we were slaves in Egypt and God powerfully intervened and got us out of that country. It says, we stood there mesmerized. We stood there incredulous and watched as God delivered miracle signs, great wonders and evil visitations on Egypt and Pharaoh and his household because of us. You know, there are some battles God will say, just cross your legs and see the deliverance of the Lord. We stood there and watched. We didn't lift a finger. Oh, God says you have fought for too long. This time I'm going to fight for you. Yeah. Verse 23 says, he pulled us out of there. Where is your own there? The place you don't want to be. He pulled us out of there so that he could bring us here. Ah, there is a difference between there and here. Here is where you ought to be. Here is what you've been paying for. Here is the promise. Here is where your mates are. May the Lord powerfully intervene, pull you out of there and bring you here in the name of Jesus. And to give us the land he so solemnly promise to our ancestors we all know the promises of God but may the promises of God not be contrary to our situation in the name of Jesus huh he pulled us out of there let's talk about there there is a place you don't want anybody to know you're at there is a is the place where sometimes like if you lived in the wrong neighborhood, when they say, where do you live? You know that Shogunle and GRA, there's only one road that separates them. So they're really the same area. Where is there that you live? You will say, I live in GRA South. And so the person who hears GRA says, oh yeah, all right, okay. Let's talk some business. 
Then all of a sudden it says, GRA South. What do you mean? Does GRA have a South? You say there now, there, there, there. There is where I live. GRA South. So when he wants to ask GRA before the railway track or GRA after, you say, leave that matter. I say, I live there. May the Lord bring us from there to here. You know, he says, he brought us out of there. I may be cracking some jokes, but I'm also very serious. You see, as long as you're there, people will not respect you. That's why we lie. Do Christians lie? No, no, we don't lie. We embellish the truth. We arrange it. There, sometimes you dress so much, trying for people not to know you are still there. But by your dressing so much, you actually let me know you are still there. See, if you try too hard, you give yourself away. You see, when somebody has plenty, he doesn't try too hard to show you. You see, it must only be his watch. He wears jeans and t-shirt. Only his watch. If you have any sense, you know that you are talking to a better person. But when you wear complete agbada to bed and you put chain. And when you're coming, you're going to bed. You put perfume. You're trying to impress me because I'm spending night in your house. I know you're still there. May we get to the point. You carry greatness with subtlety. And you tell Badamo, Naisabi. He pulled us out of there. You know. As long as you are still there, can I tell you, you will still be saying some prayers. Let me tell you, when God takes you out of there to hear, your prayer life will change. Oh, uh, you are still for me. I said your prayer life will change. You know what the Jew said? How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? When you are in the promised land, they said the fruits of the promised land one fruit will last you one week you and your family so big so sweet you don't need vitamin tablets complete how what kind of prayer will a man pray when he's so blessed that everywhere he turns Najolov? is it the kind of prayer of somebody who is still there uh, you're still for me let me come near you you know when god pulls you out of there when they say let's worship holy are you lord <laughs> all creation when you see someone say holy are you lord all creation called you lord uh, just move before i match you just move <laughs> When the church is over, God has pulled you out of there to here. When you're going to the car park, there's a way you will walk. While some people are looking for their car, you just press one button. The car will say, I day here, I day here, I day here, I day here. Can I tell you the truth? I have been there. And, but I like hair better. Do you know there are some cars when you park in the heat? We press one button twice, the car will start. The AC, madam, the stereo, all programmed. But the door won't open. So even if somebody sees that the engine is running, could see Goko. When you get there, the car recognizes you're there, the door will open. Holy are you Lord. All creations call you. 
But after the service, if you are still there, you first remove your jacket. Remove your bow tie. Because where you are going, jacket not fit. Oh. You roll it, put it in a bag. Care, roll up your shirt. So the person that sat next to you in church can't recognize you before you get to the gate. May the Lord bring us out of there. To hear in the name of Jesus. Let me talk to the sisters. When you are still there, at the end of the service, you begin to plot, hmm, how will I go home? Hmm, what will I eat? God, hey, now wow. When God takes you from there to here, there is a prince opening the door for you. There is a prince saying, which restaurant, baby girl, do you want to go? See, when you are thinking of you are going to start your stove and you are going to make some eba and you are going to go, all the plates you left last night. Listen, when you are from there and you are here, boy has hired for you a steward or bought you a washing machine. When you get home, correct. Even your kitchen, it gets AC. No sweating. Uh, you are still for me. You are still for me. Say, may the Lord take me out of there and put me here. I say here. Say here, Lord. In the name of Jesus. You see, some people are still forming. See, somebody around is saying it with style. Look at the person say, you won't talk now. You won't pray now. When there's anointing, stop forming now. Pastor say, powerful intervention is here. Let me say it again. Say, Lord, take me out of there and bring me here in the name of Jesus. Can I tell you the truth? Pastor Yomi, if you and I are still here, some people are there. You know what that means? Summer holiday is on. If you are still here and you are not there, why are you here? Eh? Why are you here? B because you want to come to church. Hey! May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. If you are telling the truth. Yeka <laughs> le Oh, may the Lord take us there. Go to Facebook. You will see some members of the church posting pictures. Small time, bad belly. Say, what? Why are you all pussy picture? Nonsense. Girl, just, don't you have anything else to do? It's because you are not there. This time next year, you will be there in Jesus' name. In fact, this time before the end of the year, you will be there in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Pastor Yom, can you see now that they are now in the sermon? I had to bring it home. I have said this before. Let me say it again. Do you know I discovered that some people, they take pictures, post it on the internet. And you are so busy thinking, yeah, when will my own life be like this? Apparently, they go to a motto showroom. Ipia selfie, chicken. Bentley Continental. And when they leave the list, they go to a powerful men's boutique. You know those suits that they sell for the price of one something, Sha? They now wear it. It's chicken. And you say, look at this fellow. We went to school together. And you start crying. Such people, I want to pray for them today. May God, they're your cousins, your friends. Okay, maybe you. May God deliver them from there. And bring them here. In Jesus name. Everybody has a there. Jokes apart. There's an area of your life you wish it would change. Today as you listen to the word of God. And you make up your mind to qualify yourself for what God says he will do. He will take you from there. And take you here. In Jesus name. 
in 2 Samuel 22, verses 17 to 20. You know what? I love you so much. I want God to do it and do it quickly. But the one thing I want to extract from you today is that when God does it, I hope you won't lose your head. I hope you won't start misbehaving. It's a prayer I'm going to lead at the end of these prayers. That God give everybody a sense to know who is their source. And what they should do when they get there. Alright. 2 Samuel 22, 17 to 20 says, He sent from above. Someone say above. <laughs> he sent from above and took me and he drew me out of what many water you see some people are only in one water some people are in many waters out of many waters he delivered me from my strong enemy from those who hated me for they were too strong for me you see some people what you are dealing with to tell you the truth is too strong for you they this this trouble confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. Change that to the message Bible. They hit me, come on now, when I was down, but God stuck by me. Are you here? Isn't it terrible the way life has given you a blow? And that's when some people show up and grind you into the dust. As a matter of fact, there are so many cowards that will never attack you until you have a financial setback. Until your marriage breaks down. They won't tell you what they think until when they think you have no voice anymore. That is when they will dress you down from up to down. And you're thinking, how long have you been thinking like that? Who knows what I'm talking about? The one reason why we must pray that we, God should never let us be down is you'll be surprised people that didn't talk before. You'll be surprised what they didn't say before. They will tell you. Even your driver will talk to you differently. The day your driver thinks you are struggling to pay salaries, you tell him, I'm still going out at 5 o'clock. Say, no, God, I'm closing. You say, what did you say? He said, God, I'm, I'm closing. You say, you, you, have you lost your mind? You just drop the key, he goes. He has been talking to your accountant. Some shops you used to shop before, when they know that you're struggling, when you come in, they say, please come this way. You say, do you have new release? They say, no, 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 it's old stock. There's discount, there's discount here. Some people are not laughing anymore because it has happened before. The Bible says, my enemies, they hit me when I was down. Somebody came to church today. You cried. You're thinking, if my situation was not like this, they would never have treated me like that. You are coming out with compensation in the name of Jesus. The Bible says he also brought me out into a broad place and he delivered me because he delighted in me. Read with me. Brought me out into what? A broad place. A better place. He delivered me because of what? He delighted me. Listen, everything I said, every prophetic statement or declaration I made is predicated on whether God delights in you or not. It's not predicated on amen. Is not predicated even on the fact that you came to church. What would it take for God to be delighted in me? The Bible says, delight yourself also in the Lord and he will grant you the desires of your heart. It is to take what makes God happy and make it your own mantra. It is to do what God wants done and do it consistently. That is how to delight yourself in the Lord so that he finds you also delightable or he's delighted in you and then he pulls you out. 
my prayer is if anybody expected to meet you there by the time they come around you won't be there anymore you'll be here in jesus name may the lord disappoint your enemies where they expect you to be they didn't even invite you it is their ogre that will invite you there's some select places that you you would like to be and they 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 they, they I'm, I'm i'm prophesying the truth now they have somebody suggested your name said no 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 and so your name was crossed out but today god is going to intervene powerfully the person that crossed your name out will find you there in the company of his boss and you know when they see you where they don't expect you they go back to the list and see ah, but i cancel the name and they say it's nice to see you here how then the boss says oh you know i need to tell you some things there are some people that they don't need an invitation they're just very special oh you you didn't know that they say say and then it says introduces you to the joke i said um I'd like to introduce one of my boys to you. I want you to just give him a little attention. And the fellow is like, I know him, but it's better not to say anything. Lift up your hand. May the Lord pull you out of many waters. And from situations too strong for you to deal with. May the Lord find you to be delightable. And deliver you and compensate you. And bring you into a broad place in the name of the Lord Jesus. Everyone that hit you when, they were, when you were down. They're in for a surprise. That will cause them to apologize to you in Jesus name. Amen. I'm going to close now. When the Bible says, my enemies that were too strong for me. Can I talk to you just like I talked to you about there and here? <laughs> too strong for me. <laughs> it means troubles that are overpowering. You know, it's not that you don't have power, but this one overpowers your own power. Resistant problem. Have you ever had malaria before that they call a resistant malaria? Whoa, you will take medicine, take medicine, take medicine. The thing will say, I'm not going anywhere. There are some troubles that are resistant. You have gone everywhere. The thing is still waiting. When the Bible says, he delivered me from my enemies too strong, it means overpowering problems, resistant troubles, the kind of troubles that strangulate your joy. Your peace, it cuts off the oxygen from your peace. It, it wants to kill your enjoyment of life. Can I tell you something? Listen, there are some kind of troubles that can make the other areas of your life insignificant. If you are really unhappy, food will not taste good in your mouth. You see, if you're really unhappy, you can wear all the makeup. People will know that there's something wrong. Oh, may, may we not see sorrow that defies costumes, defies cosmetics, defies everything. This kind of sorrow that, ex, that just, it just filters out of the pores of your skin. It makes a nonsense of everything else. Too strong for me. Strangulating my joy. Strangulating my enjoyment. Strangulating my testimony. That's what it means for God to deliver us from something too strong. Lift up your hands. May the Lord deliver us from anything that will make a nonsense of all the good things of our lives. Like bad health can ruin life completely. May the Lord deliver us in the name of Jesus. There's a song. God is a miracle worker. I have been singing a song. And as I kept singing the song, I began to experience God as a miracle worker. 
You know what God said to me? He said, a lot of people don't remember who I am. The nature of God is that he walks and signs and wonders happening around him. As you have come to church, you should not be looking for a miracle. Miracles should be happening all around you because God is here. When God intervenes, let me tell you, signs and wonders put a stop to the things that are too strong in your life. Stand to your feet. Maybe this is your song. This is the key to unlock your miracle. A glorious God. Take it slow. God is a miracle world. Close your eyes. Lift up your hands. Get lost in worship. God is a glorious God. Oh, he is God As you sing this song with the Lord, find you to become delightful. May you become the delight of the Lord. May this song of worship open heavens into your situation. Grace Assembly. God must manifest himself. Amen. When Moses got to the Red Sea, hey, the Red Sea said, I'm too strong for you. I'm too big for you. It doesn't matter what God did. The ten miracles, I'm going to put a stop to it. And God, and my Bible says, Moses started to cry to God. And God said, why are you crying to me? Just lift up your rod and go forward. God always gives an instruction. When you face an impossible mountain, your instruction is this song. You better sing the song and your difficulty will give way to your victory in the name of Jesus. Give me that song, please. the same Jews passed through the Red Sea passed through the Jordan the Bible says in Joshua 6 verse 1 when they got to the promised land it says Jericho was shut down because of them they took counsel and said it doesn't matter whether the Red Sea parted it doesn't matter whether they walked through the uh, the Jordan that was overflowing the banks, they said to themselves, they took counsel, they lie, lie to lie, lie, they will never enter the promise. And Jehovah said, if he wants to learn, don't mind them. He said, just walk around the walls. The instruction to you today is just worship the Lord with this song. And God that repressed and broke down the wall of the inheritance of the Jews, he will deliver you by a strong intervention in the name 